Welcome to the future, everyone. iOS 14 is probably the most interesting OS that we ever got for our iPhone, as it not only gives us more features, but this time actually gives us useful features that really does make the iPhone a lot more useful. Literally just use useful twice there. But in all seriousness, this beta has been so far solid, and I'm a rebel on this because I'm actually using this on my personal device. So if you too are a rebel, here's basically all the useful tips and tricks and on some hidden features of iOS 14. Keep in mind, there is still more features soon to come during the next few updates for the developer version of iOS 14. So let's go ahead and start off this list and go through my favorite features that Apple didn't really cover at all during WWDC. So this first one is activating the editor for your homepage. Now, if you notice, I don't have to tap on an app or anything. I could tap literally anywhere on the display. As long as I put my finger on the screen for one or two seconds, it will actually enable toggle mode or wiggle mode or whatever you like to call this. But it doesn't simply end there. If you tap the little plus icon, not only is this where you get access to your widgets, but did you know Instead of using the default smart widget stacker that Apple gives you by default, you can actually create and personalize some of your very own. That's right, you can actually click and drag widgets on top of each other and you could create your own personalized smart stack this way. It's literally a simple drag and drop from the home page. And not only that, depending on the widget, not only can you like cycle through them like so, but if you hold it for a couple of seconds, you can also edit that certain widget as well. Now, whenever you're trying to switch between different pages, now you can actually jump pages by just simply holding down the bottom part right here. This is one of the handful of other features that wasn't really covered during Dub Dub at all. Now, another very helpful new feature, whenever you find yourself inside certain applications and you're really deep, but you want to quickly go back, instead of having to tap the little arrow icon multiple times, you can actually press and hold and you could jump and literally skip pages and sections of applications so we could jump directly back into settings if we want. And it doesn't just work on the native app by Apple, this also works on third parties. Now a unique feature this year that was given to the iPhone is the ability to literally tap the back part of your phone and it's going to be your fourth button. Here this is how it works, if I tap the back part of my phone it brings out the control center. And then if I tap again it goes away. How did I do that? It's really simple and really interesting. All you gotta do to locate this new setting is locate it inside the setting app, go into accessibility, go to touch, and just go down where you see back tap. Here is where you can actually program two different taps. So you could be either a double tap or a triple tap. From my experience, I recommend doing a triple tap because sometimes I would falsely toggle the double tap on accident. The triple back tap is more consistent as it's more certain that you're trying to toggle it, if that makes sense. But now you can see on this list, like literally you could do a lot of things. And not only that, if you go all the way down to the very bottom, there actually are shortcuts you could create using the shortcut app. So if you want to customize a certain tap command to do a certain unique thing, you can, which is really interesting. So if your home is equipped with smart home appliances, you can link it up with home link. Now another very useful feature is located inside Safari. Safari actually got a couple of new tricks up its sleeve. For instance, if you want to launch picture in picture, especially on YouTube, all you got to do is you have to launch YouTube on Safari. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on a native app. Maybe in the near future, YouTube might may be able to update the app, but I doubt it. But let's go ahead and play this video from one of my favorite mechanics here on YouTube, the car wizard. Now there wasn't any instructions how picture in picture works, but it's very similar to like the iPad. When you play the video and you tap it twice, there's a little box up here with the arrow. Tap on this and this will launch picture in picture mode. When you're in this mode, you can literally navigate through other apps on your phone without any interference. If you want to stretch it out, you could just pinch out or pinch in to minimize it and literally move it any corner around your phone. Now some apps like Facebook and stuff already innovated this on their app. So some apps support this and some don't, but if it doesn't, it's guaranteed to work always on Safari. And then if you slide over here, you have this new app library. There's nothing special about it. I'm pretty sure you're already semi-familiar with it, but what I want to show you is inside the translation app. This is a new app that was innovated on iOS 14, and this is the translation app, and it actually works surprisingly really well. There's multiple different languages to select from. There's support for offline download, so you could download the language offline. So if you have poor reception around an area or you're traveling, it'll still work. 
And then when you switch the position of the screen, you can enter conversation view is what Apple is calling this mode. Here's some live footage of me trying it out. ¿Cuánto tiempo tienes? And as you just saw, it translated that really quickly and it was accurate. I even tried it in Mandarin with one of my friends and it worked. Then in addition to that, another thing that was really shocking is Dictation now has offline support. So let me go ahead and demonstrate by cutting off all internet access from my phone. And here's some live footage of that sorcery. This phone is offline. It works. Literally, we have no Wi-Fi or anything. Now, from my daily experience, the camera app got noticeably quicker, not just in launching the app, but also whenever you switch between different modes. But this is not the feature I want to go ahead and talk about. I want to go ahead and talk about the new video and shutter button. Now, by simply holding down either the up or bottom volume rocker, if you hold it, it'll actually begin recording a video. And once you let go, it'll stop. So the same thing that you could do on the screen shutter button, you can now do on the volume rockers. And there are nifty changes now whenever you use the selfie cam, it will actually mirror the photo that you've taken. When you take a picture, that's exactly how it's going to look like. The setting can be found inside the settings app and just go all the way down to the camera and just go ahead and enable this part that says mirror front camera and that's it. Now in case you didn't notice, when we were using the camera app, you might have noticed the green dot. Very similar to what Macs do, whenever the webcam is on, there's always a green LED dot. Well now, the iPhone also does this now. But not only that, it doesn't end there. If you use your microphone or if there's an app that relies on your microphone and it's enabled and is picking up data, there's going to be an orange icon. And if you go into your control center, it's going to show you the previously used app that used the microphone or the camera. This is really cool and this just shows that Apple is really allowing its user to be more aware of what data is being captured on their device. And it doesn't end there as I'm going to go ahead and show you more cool features about this. Then another worthy upgrade that's worth mentioning, well, technically I'll consider this as a feature, especially the next part. If you're using FaceTime, if your phone supports it, the default resolution will now be 1080p, but it doesn't end there. If you go into your settings and go into FaceTime, a popular feature that was removed on the previous OS is back here on iOS 14, and that is eye contact. Now this is kind of weird, it's kind of unknown technology, I don't know why it got removed, scrapped from the previous OS, but it's back now. And what this basically allows you to do is it renders your eyes, so it makes it so that you're looking directly as to the person you're talking to. Because the camera is located on top, but you will be naturally looking directly at the screen. Was this mode enabled? You may be looking directly at the screen, but on the other person's side that's talking to you, it will look like you're making direct eye contact to them. This is really interesting, and it's pretty cool that Apple is able to have something like this on the iPhone. Emoji Search is now innovated on iOS 14's keyboard. Before I had to use a third-party keyboard for this feature, now it's actually native by Apple on your iPhone. So now if you're there's a certain emoji you're looking for, you can literally type it in and will appear. It's a lot more efficient than having to manually scroll to locate that exact emoji. So now in Safari, there's now support for translations. So if you ever go into like a foreign website or something and you want to translate its text, if you tap this little upper part right here, there's now a new translation option right here and it actually does it really well once you select the correct language you want to translate it to. It also shows you on top and as Billy Mays would always say, but wait, there's more. If you go back up here, you may have also noticed there's now a new tracking report section. What is this? This is really interesting. This allows you to know exactly what website is tracking your data the most. This is extremely cool and it's nice because this just shows that Apple is really trying to weaponize its users to be aware on what's going on and what application or what program or what website is taking their information. Oh, and if there's an app that's taking information and uploading it on their servers, it also lets you know on top what application is doing this. And all this stuff will be automatically enabled once you update. So the Spotlight Search got a nifty tool. Now whatever app you're searching for, this can also be a document, but it's always going to be highlighted. As you see, there's like a glow outer ring around it. This is because the search key is now swapped with a go key. So as soon as you tap on this, it will launch the app. 
And then in case you're using voice memo in a loud environment, there actually is a new icon above here, which is said to eliminate background noise. Another worth mentioning feature on the voice memo app is now you can actually create separate folders for everything. So if you recorded something in a classroom or something, you could create these new folders. And I know I misspelled that. When taking a screenshot, Apple for some reason gave us more coloring options. You literally have every single color option known to man to select from available right here in your fingertips. So if there's an exact color you're looking for, I guess you could do that now. These next few features involve your control center. And in order to have these enabled, you need to go to your settings, go into accessibility, and make sure you have the magnify glass on. By simply doing this, you should be able to equip the magnify glass in your control center by customizing your control center. But when you click on this, it gives you this new application. The UI is totally redesigned compared to pre previous OS because now you can actually zoom in. Now that you can actually change the contrast, take a temporary photo. So if you have vision issues, you have all these filters and many different tools to play with. And the photo that you took a picture of, you can also save it to camera roll if you want to or share it with your contacts. Now the other new feature can be added in your control center and that is sound recognition. This thing actually works surprisingly really well. You have all these different sounds that your phone could detect and send you a push notification. So let's say for example, you went to the restroom, but you have your phone out on the counter. You're done with your business with the restroom. So you go outside, but you were unsure if you heard the doorbell. Well, you could simply grab your phone and look at it and double check if it was indeed the doorbell. Here's some live footage of that thing working in action. Yeah, this feature works extremely well and there's a bunch of different sounds it could help detect like water, pets, a baby in a crib. So it could send that push notification to your Apple Watch and literally use your phone as a baby monitor. It's kind of cool. But those were my favorite features, some new tips and tricks that I find myself using on iOS 14 beta. Now, of course, it's still is a beta, so... Obviously, there's going to be new features coming in in the near future for future updates. So if you don't want to miss those, make sure to stay tuned to the channel. If you want to know how iOS 14 Apple CarPlay looks like, I cover that in this video over there. And then this video over here, that's just a video that YouTube is suggesting specifically for you. Feel free to watch either or. Again, thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.